Hey, what is going on everybody? It's going to be a great day. Uh, it's going to do something a little bit different. I don't know if a lot of you guys that are new to the channel may not have seen these kind of videos, but this is like the underwater videos. Not like the fishing underwater, but me showing you guys a technique underwater. Now, I, I have seen these, this, this not these, but this video been requested a ton here lately. A lot of you guys wanted to see one come back. I don't like to do like straight up just uh, tips on this channel. I, I used to like to do them a lot, but now I try to do them as I'm fishing. Um, in yesterday's video, uh, or two days ago video, excuse me, was a was a the underwater me fish bed fishing underwater, and here in the next week or so, next two weeks, hopefully it'll be a lot more bed fishing plus post spawn fishing at the same time, hopefully mixed in. So today I'm gonna kind of give you guys a couple techniques that I use during this time of year here down in the south, and I know here maybe in the next month or so, maybe you guys up north will be in the same kind of pattern. I I use the same kind of baits mainly throughout the next month quite religiously. Now I will not be showing you guys the Sanko underwater because you guys have seen it a thousand times but that is one bait during post spawn. I will throw a ton. It will be a wacky rig Sanko. I'm trying to like move away from just using Sankos a ton on this channel even though it's very very productive bait. You guys are just probably getting tired of me using it constantly. I wanted to go over uh, one thing before we get into it. These shirts, all my apparel, not done, just this one bright bright neon one. Originally I thought this was my, my unlucky shirt but I caught my biggest fish in my life bass wise on this shirt. Yeah, I'm actually loving it. I look like a freaking highlighter, but I think it looks cool. But anyway, all my apparel, all the, uh, all my Lunkers TV stuff will be coming with a signed sticker. I think there's, there's under a hundred of them left now. Uh, you'll get one for every single apparel that you buy. I'll put the link to that below. Plus all of the baits that I'm using today. I don't generally do that, but for you guys today, if you guys want to know what hook I'm using, which weight I'm using, which peg I am using, they will also be linked. I will put a separate section that says items used, for this video or whatnot will be linked there. There'll be Amazon links, you can go check them out. It'll make your life a lot easier. We're gonna start off with the number one thing I have been using this season to catch these bedded fish. Oh, I will also put the rod and reel down below because a lot of you guys have asked that kind of question. I know when I was first starting off fishing, I was actually trying to learn a lot through YouTube. Rods, I was so freaking confused on what the difference between a 7 2, 7 4, 7 6, 7. 7'11", 7 foot. I didn't really understand and couldn't comprehend that. I wish somebody would just tell me which rods to buy. So I'll do you guys a favor. The ones that I'd be using this time of year will also be linked down below. But here we go. This is what we're going to get into. I was watching a video of John Bees the other day when I was out, me and him were out filming. And he was underwater video, was, we were doing an MTV video. And he had a setup kind of like this, you know. Um, actually, I'm the one that caught the fish, so never mind. I did have this exact same setup. I'm using this flipping hook. It's a very thick wired gauge flipping hook. So the real reason why I'm using the thick wired gauge fish hook is I definitely do not want that sucker to bend out. Now, I, at the beginning, I was using this thing pegged. I used to peg this weight like crazy on this flipping, but now I don't peg it. Then there's a reason why I'm going to show you guys right here. The fish eats it, and, that, and the, and the non-pegged weight just slips right back up the line. See, I just slipped right back up the line. And that got me thinking, you know what? Why would you want to have, oh, oh God. Why would you want to have your weight pegged like this? So it's just something else that's getting in the way when, when it's inside the bass's mouth. Now this is great when you're flipping it in a, in a, uh, in a grass and matted vegetation and stuff like that, because it, it needs to go through, it needs to be, you know, it needs to go through as one solid fluent motion. And then when you set the hook under there, you snell it and the hook does that. Okay, that's what it's mainly for. But when you're bed fishing, you don't really need that. That you don't really need it like that. So I don't recommend this. I really don't recommend pegging your weight when flipping into beds. I absolutely don't. I, I don't do it anymore. After seeing that video, I literally learned something right then because I used to always do it. I used to be like, I need to peg my weight. I need to peg my weight if it's pegged up and what. I don't do it anymore. Now I'm just running a, a straight little tungsten with a four rod flipping hook. It'll be linked down below for you guys. Now, now I'm using a lighter tungsten, I'm using a 3 16 ounce tungsten to flip with. I don't want to be using a 3 8 ounce or something heavy because I'm not really fishing in really deep water. I'm fishing in, in, that, uh, in that, that 1 to maximum somewhere around 8 foot range. That's this setup and uh, I guess we'll head outside and we will check it out and we'll see what I'm, what I'm talking about. And the bait I'm using, I'll use a couple different baits during this time of year and I'll show you guys two different baits as well. All right, so you guys see that right there? You guys see the little little circle? Hopefully you guys can see that little circle thing right there. That's what we're going to call the bed. A little demonstration. These are the two baits that I'm going to be using today. 
This is the one I just caught that 10-2 on the other day. Big fan of it. I really like the way it looks underwater. You guys have seen it underwater, kind of. And then here, if this isn't working, you guys want to use something a little bit crazier? Oh, we'll go with a little bit of a, a white dealio here. They'll be linked down below if you guys want to check them out. Now, now let's get into the, the whole the whole process behind what I'm thinking here when I walk up. Or you don't really walk up on too many beds. How about this? How about when your boat slides across? We're gonna put this one in my pocket real quick. Rig this sucker up. Boom, rigged. All right, here we go. Okay, you guys see the bed there? Flip, easy peasy. That's it. Let it fall on its own. Now I want to say there's kind of like a strike zone as you guys can see in the last few videos that these fish like and all they do is just drag that sucker through. Keep tension on the line. Make Look, just pop it. Look at that. Look at that. Look how much it moves in the water. Thing look clean. There you go. Let that sucker fall. I usually like to pat. There, see, you don't really want to do what I just did there. See, if that's the bed, I don't like casting directly on the bed. You know what I mean? I like to cast past the bed take the bait and then slowly just swim it in. Just slowly swim it in. That's it, let it fall. I'm telling you right now, cast it past the bed. It could be that far past if you want. And just kind of twer torque it, torque it, you know what I mean? Let it fall on its own. Then you drag it into the bed. That's what I do. That's what I do. You guys need to do it or you don't, but that's what I like to do. And just kind of do this, that's it. That's as easy as bed fishing is. Now, a lot of times you don't know if the fish is gonna be locked on or not. That's when you guys gotta start learning is if the fish is there when you cruise by and it stays there, pretty, pretty catchable, you just gotta work it. But that's pretty much all I do with this bait. Swim it in, drop it, maybe pop it a few times, kind of like this. Let the fish nose it. It'll pick it up just like this. It'll go, <laughs> might just grab the tail and spit it, but right when it picks it up and turns, pop them, pop them. Get them right in the face. Now, if this bait doesn't work, if you guys aren't a big fan of this bait, maybe, maybe you guys wanna switch over to something a little bit different. I am a fan of this, do like it, good solid white this one's a little bit easier to get through grass and such it's a little thicker plastic so you got to set the hook a little harder or you can leave the, the hook protruding a little bit if there's no grass around which i was doing the other day so when they grab it you know all you gotta do is lift up your rod don't have to put a ton of pressure the plastic so i'm gonna do the same deal guys i'm gonna go all the way through just kind of pat pitch it past the bed bring it to the bed let it fall all right that's all you gotta do just play with it just play with it, you know what I mean? You guys know how to play with it. Just play with it just like that. Pop it a few times, let it sit there, let it sit there, and then rip it out of there. If it doesn't like it, rip it out of there. Keep doing it until you piss that, that fish off a ton. Just swim it in there. I mean, this bait looks good swam. I mean, look at that thing swam. Do, 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 do. Can work as a really good trailer as well, but we're not on that kind of subject. We're on the bed, bed fishing. Anyway, get it in there, do its thing, let it fall around the edge of the bed, and then slowly just kind of drag it in there, just like this. That's it. That's all you got to do. Now you guys can see I'm probably going to pop it and that weight's going to shoot up. But you guys will see why I don't like it pegged. See how that weight just kind of... Let's see if I can get in there one more time for you guys. But see how the weight is separated? So all when they bite on it, all it is is hook and plastic. There's no weight that can kind of push that, that uh, hook around anywhere. Pop it. Look, look, that weight's gone. That's why I don't use a peg anymore. Now let's switch over to something else. All right, all right, so the, so the second kind of thing that I would be doing, you know, you got these fish that are either going to be moving up or they're already moved up, but if they're already moved up and locked on, I don't think you're really gonna catch them on a moving bait, as in a little swim jig right here. This is, little, this is the one I've been using here lately. It's just a white swim jig. Don't honestly remember the, the weight. Doesn't really matter to me much as long as it's not getting hung up in grass or sinking too quick and I can just kind of slow roll it. All, all depths will kind of, uh, very when, when the way to swim jig you're using. But anyway, I'm just using this small little swim jig, just like this, this little tiny thing. Now I'm throwing it on the seven foot two, the six stick with 15 pound floral. All I'm doing this while, while one person's either up bed fishing or sight fishing for, for something or while you're cruising, throwing this stuff out here this way or throwing it kind of parallel with the boat, just throwing it this way, you know what I mean? Maybe you might get lucky, catch one of those fishes moving up and it, it might give you that opportunity to find just a random straggling fish that's kind of doing its own thing on its way up. I don't, I don't know, that's, that's, what you're, that's what you're doing. You're throwing that chatterbait. Chatterbait was kind of working more towards the end of the days for me, or uh, that's probably about it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. To find them that are moving up, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Or, oh, oh, weightless fluke, or mojo rig fluke. One of the two, you guys have seen them underwater, so I'm not gonna show those either. But we'll head outside. We'll take a look at this swim jig real quick. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not really that crazy. Just, just you, you, guys will, you guys will see here in a second. 
So next to the swim jig, it's really self-explanatory. We'll see what this thing looks like on the water. I'm just using on 15 pound test with a seven foot two six stick. So I'm gonna throw it out there as I would normally. And all I'm going to do is slowly reel this thing. I'm just gonna reel it just enough to where the, the ass end of that bait is kicking. See what I'm saying by kicking? That's all it's doing. Kicking, kicking, kicking. Doing exactly what it needs to do. I like the color white, you know, white or green pumpkin. And I'll switch over to a black and blue if it's the right kind of conditions, but I'll throw a white generally for most of the time, just like I am right here. Just slowly roll that thing. Throw it out there one more time for you guys that really do like swim bait or swim jigs. Look at that thing swim through the water. Beautiful bait. That's it. Okay, so another bait that I'd be using this time of year would probably be this is early springtime, remember? Little frog. So this frog I'm gonna be throwing with some like probably 50 to 65 pound braid. This braid, everybody keeps asking about this braid too. I guess there's gonna be a lot of links down below, but this is that neon braid that everybody's been asking me about. I'll link it down below. I'm throwing this on a seven foot four heavy six stick, the one that we kind of made a little while ago. And uh, pretty much this is kind of an early morning or late in the day, throwing it super shallow, and you're kind of getting lucky if it's over grass, guys. Grass and pads and stuff like that, just like normal springtime technique. And they will come up and they will munch on it. They will do it, but the thing is, I have learned that I do not want to throw a frog over a bed that I want to actually work. I'm not really a big fan of that. If I'm going to work a bed, I'm going to work it with plastic. But if I'm trying to fan cast kind of like that swim jig I showed you guys earlier, I would be throwing this up shallow. Anyway, we're going to take a look at what this looks like underwater. And you guys get to see what that green line looks like. Maybe it looks kind of crazy. I don't know. We're going to about to find out together. See what this looks like. Ooh. Ooh. Let's just flip it out there. Here we go. There's that green line. I don't know if you guys can see it from the uh, bass's point of view. This is pretty clean water too, so let's keep that in mind. Oh yeah, look at that frog just doing little frog things. Just doing little frog things. Can you guys see that line very well? Oh yeah. This is how I, I work a frog, by the way, guys. I don't know if you guys know how to work a frog. It's the easiest thing ever. Look at that. Oh, look at that frog. Look at that frog just doing its thing. Usually you want it to do this kind of deal. Oh yeah, look at that frog. There we go, look at that. Let's see it again. Let's see if I can make this work a little bit better for you guys. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh frog, dance for me, frog, dance for me. Can you guys see that line very well? Let's lay this line right on top of the water. Can you see it? Is this something you'd use? I don't know, it's been working for me lately. Look at that frog. God dang, I think it's sexy. Okay, so the last, so the last but not least thing I'd be doing is gonna have to be this new technique. I'm not gonna say it's the best thing in the world for this time of year, because I haven't fished it all the way throughout this kind of year yet. But I know for a fact that it's going to work very well, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw it out there. And it's gonna be this new swimming Sanko technique I learned from Gary. Now. I'm going to do my best to link these hooks below. I'll even link some silver solder for you guys. So the reason why I'm using silver solder is because it doesn't rust. I guess that's, that's what I was told. I don't know very much. I just kind of listen. If Gary tells me something, I'll listen to it. I'm using these tiny, small swimming senkos. I'm going to use a little bit brighter color for you guys today inside the water so you guys can see what it looks like when it's swimming. But what we're doing here, all right, guys, I have probably showed this in a video already before. Taking that silver solder, just a little bit piece, or a little bit piece, a little piece like this, and just shoving the sucker straight into the head of the swimming sanko. A lot of people ask, why do I do this? Or why did he do this? It's pretty obvious, you know, you want to add a little bit of weight if you want to get it down there. And that's kind of how you do it. That's how he does it, at least. These things, they will, they'll sink by themselves, of course. They are the same buoyancy as like a senko, but why not add a little bit to the head? And all I'm doing is going right through, just like that. That's it. That's literally it. Okay, now the head of these swimming sinkers are kind of hard, which is good because then it doesn't break off very easily. But that is it, guys. And I got it set up on the six stick, the seven foot uh, one, medium heavy six stick, the spinning setup. Um, right now I'm throwing it on this, I'm testing out this cool line because I like it. It's red, white, and blue. But anyway, it's just 20 pound or 30 pound braid with a 15 pound leader. And that is it. That is all it is to it, boys and girls. That's it. So let's go outside. Let's take a look at this sucker. And then we'll come in, recap. I think it's going to look better than the swim jig myself. Oh my kicking action. Wait till this thing goes across the camera. 
Look at that bait. That thing is insane. Look, God, it's that's so beautiful looking. So I use this bait a ton um, in grassy areas. Like if it's like a matted height, just think of like a matted grass. It's like where you have like five foot of water and three foot from the bottom up is is nothing but grass. You could just swim this little tiny swimming senko and look at this thing. Look at this one that swims by the camera. Oh my God. I'm telling you, this thing is killer. This small bait will catch giant fish for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. I hope you guys kind of uh, kind of have somewhat of an understanding what they look like underwater. Now, now the main thing you guys want to think about when you're bed fishing or, or learning how to bed fish or just going out and doing it is you have to know. You need to know exactly if that fish is locked on or not. That's like the most important thing. Okay, so so what I mean by so this is the bed. This is the bait that I was just working and the bait's going through the bed. It's just doing its thing. This is the strike zone. This is what you're looking for. Now to know if a fish is really locked on. So these fish can be moved up and they can just be doing their thing, but they're not locked on. So if you, if you go by a fish or you see a fish and it scoots away real quick and doesn't come back, a lot of times they'll scoot away and they'll make a big rotation like they always do and they'll go in circles and they'll come back and they'll do this. They'll check the bed and then they'll go back to their safe zone and they'll sit off here like this and just watch the bed, okay? That's generally a locked on fish. If it doesn't come back and do that full rotation or nothing like that, or if it does a full rotation and then sits off over here, I generally will not mess with the fish, but generally it's gotta be in this kind of an area. Now, if it comes back and you're bait, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of teaching some people here, maybe, maybe if you guys don't really understand this, but if your bait's in here like this, your bait is on the bed, all right? This is the fish. It's gonna come in like this, and it's most likely, this is what I mean by nose down, it's gonna nose down on that freaking bait, all right? It's gonna nose down on that sucker. Now when it nose down on the sucker, it's probably gonna open up its mouth, inhale, pick it up to its bait, and spit it off the bed. That's generally what it's gonna do, it's not there to eat. Now a lot of times you gotta kinda of get that thing all riled up, and sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does, sometimes you work a fish for an hour, and nothing comes of it. But one, that one split second that you get that fish and it has that full bait in its mouth, that's when you set the hook. That's, that's literally it. It's not like normal fishing when they're really hungry and they're going to want to eat it. The fish come in, they nose the bait, they'll follow it off the bed, and then you got to flip back in and redo the process over and over and over and over again. Sometimes it's real quick, sometimes it takes an hour. Well, I hope that was... Uh, Hope that was beneficial for some of you guys. I don't know, a lot of you guys may not know a lot about bed fishing. I've been learning how to bed fish over the last two years. I learned how to do fishing and fishing in general just off of watching YouTube videos and going out and, 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 and putting them to use. I'm not kidding, that's how I learned how to fish. I didn't, my dad wasn't able to teach me how to fish because he hasn't been around for like 10 years. So I had to do it myself. I wanted to learn how to bass fish, so I went out and I learned. And this is how I did it by watching YouTube videos. So hopefully I can help you help. Hopefully this helped one of you guys out. If not, hopefully it helped a bunch of you guys out. Maybe, maybe the links down below where you guys always ask what bait are you using, what line are you using, what, what all, what are you using? Hopefully maybe that helps you decide after looking at that bait. Maybe that helps you decide, man, I need to buy this kind of bait. Maybe I should give this kind of a bait a chance. It doesn't have to be these exact baits. I mean, son of a... Well guys, it's not gonna be these exact baits because they just dumped all over the floor, but it could be a bait just like that. You know, that's another thing. Why the hell, Strike King, do you put them in this bag? And then they just, they just, they don't end up in this, they just, ah, it sucks, this is really sucks. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really like trying to do these uh, little instructional things, maybe like once a week or maybe once a month. I don't know, you guys tell me, leave a comment below. Buy one of these shirts, it helps me out, and you get a signed sticker at the same time because we only have less than 100 left, and I know some of you guys really want one. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys tomorrow with another, well, we'll probably be fishing. Lazza!